Okay. Thank you, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. All right. <laughs> well, welcome, uh, everyone. I see everyone's taking out paper and stuff to take tons and tons of notes. And that's okay. But actually, uh, today you won't need that many notes because this entire presentation is going to be available online. So I'm going to give you the link for that afterwards. So don't feel like you have to. You know, not listen and, and write. <laughs> Some classes you got to write and not listen at yeah. the time, but not not today. So, uh, as uh, Professor Santana said, my name is Lowell Bennett. I'm uh, a tutor here at the Learning Center. Um, actually, probably most of you probably know me from the math lab, or you may have seen me in the math lab a lot. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm more of a, a math guy than an English guy, which may make you wonder. Why is the math guy yeah. <laughs> teaching the English class? Yeah. And the reason goes back, back in time. You got to back up, back up many, many, many years uh, to when I was an undergraduate uh, student. Uh, I was at Stanford, and I was studying engineering. And I would never take a class that required you to write a paper. And there were a couple classes where that you had to take and you had to write a paper, but I think I only wrote maybe two papers in my entire undergraduate engineering degree, <laughs> which was miraculous. And the reason I hated to do it was because it, for me it was always so time consuming. You're always in there, I'm, well, I'll always wait to the last minute, you know, the paper's due tomorrow. <laughs> it's like a five page paper and I would just get in there, you know, finally and cram it out and I used to hate that. So if I look, see the syllabus, oh, you know, a paper, you know, a midterm paper and a final paper, it's like, I'm out of there. <laughs> I want to take a midterm and a final test. And this continued through my, that career. I went back to get a master's degree in business, um, worked in business for many, many, many years, uh, had to write in the course of my work there. But finally, I came back to school here, started taking classes here, and I said, I gotta take an English class because I can't go through the rest of what little time I have left not being, always being afraid to write these papers. And I took a class from Dr. Cooks, um, who's now the, uh, the Dean of English over at uh, Chabot College, but he used mm -hmm. to teach English 5, uh, critical thinking here. And that class really just kind of opened my eyes to this powerful technique and kind of demystified the writing process and made it more of a step-by-step -step process where before I was thinking, oh, you have to be so creative and come up with all these ideas. And it's like, well, you do have to be somewhat creative, but it's really about following this process and following these steps. So I took what he taught me, what some of the other instructors have showed me, uh, other things I've looked up online, and I've created this kind of, it's a new mentality. And it's called, I call it the Bennett Detective Model. In case this thing blows up, I want to get credit yeah. for it. <laughs> um, and it's, as you see, it's called an efficient process to complete the assignment. And that's really what I'm focused on. As an engineer, I want to be efficient. I don't want to spend time, I don't want to wait till the last minute and have to do it, and then I can't do it, and it's a it's big headache. And um, it's really built around this idea of being a, a detective as you write. So what we're going to talk about today is this new approach. And we're going to cover you know, how to pick a topic, how to gather evidence, um, constructing body paragraphs. That's maybe the most important critical part, the thing I learned from Dr. Cooks. And then how to write the intro and conclusion. And the Bennett detective model, what is it? Well, the detective, if you think about a detective when he's going into um, to solve a crime or gets assigned to a crime, there's a number of steps he goes through. Well, when a detective um, gets assigned to a crime, you know, that's kind of the first thing. He comes into it, he doesn't know who did it. So it's not like he comes to the crime scene and he knows exactly what's going on. He's, you know, he, he's clueless in a sense. He doesn't have the clues to the crime. So the first thing he does is he goes out and he starts to gather evidence. 
Um, and as he gathers this evidence, it's, um, he's trying to figure out, he's trying to piece things together. And gradually he gathers this evidence and he starts to formulate a theory of, the cr of you know, who did it or who's responsible. Um, he formulates this theory, maybe it changes as he uncovers new evidence. And then eventually he figures out, okay, this is who did it. Here's all the evidence I have. And then finally he has to organize and summarize that evidence so that the, um, either he or the district attorney, when they present it to a jury, it makes logical sense. Um, these are very similar to things that we need to do when we're writing these papers. I used to always think, oh, I've got to start off, what's my thesis? What's my thesis? And then I would just use that as an excuse to delay <laughs> starting the paper because I can't think of a good thesis. And it's like, well, really, you don't have to think of a good thesis or a theory or know who did the crime. Maybe the first step is, well, first you want to get the assignment, follow the assignment, you know, focus on the crime that you're assigned to. But then the next thing is you want to go out and gather evidence. And so it kind of turns things a little bit, at least for me, it kind of turned it on its head. I'm gathering this evidence. As I'm gathering it, I'm learning. I'm coming up with an opinion. I'm discovering new things that I didn't know before. And that is really kind of the process of writing. Like I'm, in this case, I'm talking about kind of a research paper. Um, that's kind of the process that you go through. You don't necessarily know what your thesis is going to be right at the beginning. You gather the evidence first, then you formulate like a working thesis and go from there. Um, the final part, step five here says writes uh, opening and closing statements uh, for the jury. And so that's kind of the, at the very end. You're going to have an opening statement or introduction. You're going to present all the evidence to uh, an introduction that ends with, uh, you know, who did it. Uh, then you're going to uh, present all that evidence to the jury. And then at the very end, you come in with your closing statements. You reemphasize uh, who did it summarize briefly the evidence and say hey you got to find this guy guilty or, or whatever the case is so that's the kind of process that uh, the detective model is uh, one of the first things you have to do is um, is pick a topic um, sometimes the assignment you always focus on the assignment and the assignment can be very broad and it's like well I don't even know where to start we can write about anything that interests us. Um, and so even that component requires a bit of research. You gotta go in, you know, Google some stuff, you know, just try to find some basic information. Um, and finally, I say pick something that's interesting to you and then start to look for the evidence. Don't let this first component of the process, this topic picking or thesis writing kind of impede you. You know, just go right in, start looking for stuff have faith that the topic's going to come to you and the thesis will, <laughs> will make itself apparent as you go along. Uh, if you're lucky, they just tell you what to do. <laughs> and they just assign it. You know, you're going to write about this. You're going to read this book. You're going to pull out notes from this book. And it's like, oh, that's like the best because you can just follow those detailed instructions. But the key is, you know, what is the assignment? And uh, I'll emphasize that again and again. Um, this is, I think I characterize this as efficient essay writing. I also try to think of it as easy essay writing. And so my focus is on, you know, getting it done and getting it done well. There's lots of other things you can do to expand upon it if you have time. Maybe you finished your first draft. You've got even a second or third draft that looks pretty good and you want to expand on it. So that's fine too, but I'm focused on you know, getting it done, getting it done well. Um, let's see, so we're gonna focus on the assignment, yeah. So detective has the, the case, and now he's gotta go out and collect evidence. He's like, well, I always like to think, you know, how much evidence do I need? How much, when is my research done when I'm writing this paper? And so, I like to formulate a plan for how much evidence I'm going to need. And so in this example, it's like a five-page paper. So I've got a five-page paper. I'm going to budget 
like half a page for the intro and half a page for the conclusion. Maybe they're a little longer, a little shorter, but we'll just work with that. So that leaves me four pages. You know, again, I'm thinking efficient. I want to get this done. I got kids. I got a job. <laughs> um, that leaves me four pages of writing I actually need to do. So the key thing, key insight Dr. Cooks gave to me is that oh, each piece of evidence is actually a body paragraph. Each piece of evidence that you find, you're going to take that piece of evidence and you're going to build a whole paragraph around it. So if each body paragraph, well, there's two to three body paragraphs per page, one piece of evidence per paragraph. So as I'm going through, I'm going to need like eight to 12 pieces of evidence in my, you know, as in my research. As I'm going through reading the book or, you know, using the library to research things, I have to find this, you know, about eight to 12 pieces of evidence. Then I can be pretty sure I'm, I could stop if that evidence supports what I'm trying to prove. And, you know, I'll have, a, I'll have enough. If I need more, I can always go back. Um, I say start researching, you know, Googling. That's actually a smiley face. I don't know why it looks like that. <laughs> Uh, in reading about the topic, um, use the library resources. Um, you know, there's a whole library up there. It's incredible how much access we have as students here to all of these da vast databases of academic research, academic papers. Um, some of it's kind of straightforward to use. If you have trouble with it, you know, ask the librarians. You know, do a little research on your own, kind of a good faith effort. Then go to them, say, hey, you know, I did this much. Now I'm lost. And they'll, uh, they'll help you. This next bullet point is very important. It says, as you read, find quotes and statistics that are interesting to you. So you're going to be out there. You're going to be looking for stuff. You may be reading the book that was assigned. And you're going to come across stuff that's like, oh, that's kind of interesting. <laughs> I mean, we all do it. We're like, oh, that's the same thing that happened to me. You know, you make a, some sort of a connection. When you do that, note what it was, note where it was in the book or what article it came from, and document it. You know, write out the quote, you know, in a, a notebook, you know, highlight it, whatever's going to work for you. But you're going to document it now, in the moment, when you see it. And I used to never do this. <laughs> and I used to see people that were, you know, in my English class, whatever, and they're walking around and they're reading the same book I'm reading. And I'm like, yeah, I read the book. I read the book. And I'm looking at their book. And their book is like chock full of all these sticky notes and yellow and green and color coded. And I'm like, what the hell are they doing? <laughs> and then, you know, a little bit later, you know, we I check in with them like, hey, did you write the paper yet? And they'd be like, no, not yet. I haven't started yet. I can't me either. And I check in with them a couple of days later, like, hey, how's that paper going? They're like, oh yeah, I'm done. I'm like, what? How could you finish it? You know, I started on it. We both kind of started actually writing about the same time. But what I was finding is I was having to go back and reread it. You know, I read, I did read the book. I knew what it was about. All that stuff had an idea what I wanted to write about, but to actually get the evidence, I had to go back, reread stuff, and it's like doing double the work. And you think about a detective, you know, he doesn't just go out and start asking questions, hey, what's going on, where were you on the night of the thing, and just sit there. You know, everything you say, he's writing that stuff down. <laughs> you know, the crime scene investigators, you know, they got their tape, you know, they're taking pictures. Everything gets documented. So you guys, we guys, as detectives, have to be better at when we see it, we document it. Because just think at the end of the process, you're going to write these body paragraphs, you're going to write the essay, and then it's going to be like, oh, we're excited, Paige. Oh, what am I going to do? I, don't, I know I got this quote. I don't know where I got it. <laughs> you're going to be going back for that. So that's really critical, this documentation. Um, and then finally, uh, really, as you are finding things that interest you, 
your thesis is going to start to, it's like, ah, this is interesting. This is kind of saying this. This is having this impact. You're going to be formulating your thesis as you're doing this research. And when you start to hone in on it, then you start to collect more research, more evidence that supports what you're trying to say. Um, again, more about the documentation. Um, and here's the key thing. Think about, st start thinking about the one big thing, your one big main idea. You know, what is the one thing I want to prove? And then maybe start, also start, start thinking about how am I going to prove it? You know, what evidence am I going to need? And then it allows you to kind of focus in on exactly what you want rather than having a big broad search. You start to get a better idea. And then it's like, I need a few more pieces of evidence. I can really focus in on it. Third is create a working thesis. Oh, and let me remind you that, because um, I see some people taking pictures, there's going to be um, a link uh, at the end that takes you right to this presentation. So so presentation, <laughs> just go to the link and it'll all be there. Um, so number three, create a working thesis. Well, again, we're kind of doing a kind of a basic process, kind of the easy, efficient. And one of the most basic formats for a thesis statement is this format. X is Y because of A, B, and C. X is your topic. Y is your opinion about the topic. You're always generally trying to express some opinion, you know, what you believe to be true and what you're going to prove with the evidence. And then A, B, and C are the major categories of what you're trying, to, of what you're going to use to prove that X is Y. And the key thing this does is it does two things. It puts forth your opinion, what you're trying to prove, and it also gives you, your reader, kind of an outline of what's going to be coming. And so all this stuff that's, all this evidence you provided, it needs a framework in kind of this one sentence. And I, it could be more than one sentence, um, but this, I like to use one sentence that kind of frames everything for the, for the reader. So they know that, oh, you're going to try to prove this, and I'm going to be hearing about A, B, and C. And it kind of puts it in the back of their mind. So they're looking for it whenever it comes up with in the paper. Let's give an example. So again, your thesis is going to state your case and outline the evidence. Um, the general form is kind of the evidence is clear that, you know, whatever you're trying to prove. And then you have sub, I have subtopic one, two, three, and four. Some people like four subtopics. Some people like three. <laughs> Um, a lot depends on the, the evidence you have, um, but uh, here's the example, you know, in this hypothetical detective model. You know, the evidence in this case is clear that the butler did it. You know, that's my opinion that I'm going to try to be proving. Um, he had access, he had motive, the murder weapon had his fingerprints on it, and the murder weapon was found in his car. So that's my thesis. Now the reader knows, oh, it's the butler. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to hear something about, you know, the access and the motives and the fingerprints and, oh you know, the, the weapon was in his car. So when I start to write my body paragraphs that present this evidence, the reader's like, oh, oh yeah, he did have access. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. You know, he had the motive. <laughs> it's all going to be, it's going to pop in their mind. It's going to make sense. I'm going to want to pause for a minute. I've been kind of on a sh roll. I don't know if there's any questions about where we're at. Okay, I'm going to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> so I tell people this is the most important slide in the entire presentation. Perhaps the most important slide you'll ever see in the rest of your life. <laughs> it's the Cook's body paragraph. <laughs> um, when I saw this, it sort of crystallized in my mind, you know, really how to write. And before I had always kind of 
you know, stream of consciousness. It's like, oh, when am I going to start a new paragraph? Well, I still have a new idea. I'll start a new paragraph and I'll write some stuff. And so, but when I saw this, it really gave me a lot, made a lot of sense to me because I had heard about pi paragraphs. That's a very popular strategy, a very effective strategy. Uh, point information example, PIE, pi. Um, it's a great structure. This expands on that. It provides a little bit more detail, which is a little more structure, which is what I found that I needed. So I was like, point, okay, what's my point? Okay, what information do I have? Um, what explanation do I have? Um, it just was too general for me. This gives seven sentences that if you put these sentences in as your body paragraph, it's pretty much almost guaranteed to make sense to your reader. And it starts, curiously enough, with number three give the evidence, the actual quote of the data. It's going to be the third sentence. But remember before, as detectives, we were going out, we were gathering this evidence, maybe quotes in a book, um, maybe some data or statistics. Um, it could be very compelling evidence. But if we just dump it on the reader, they're going to be like, oh, wow, that's a lot of evidence. <laughs> they won't know what to make of it. So we have to kind of move them in easily present the evidence to them, then explain what it means, why it's important, summarize what that piece of evidence, you know, everything you just told them, and then slowly kind of go to the next piece of evidence so that there's this kind of flow that you have. And this seven paragraph structure does that. Uh, it starts with number one, you know, what is this paragraph about, you know, the topic paragraph. Uh, then it sets up the evidence. It says something about the evidence that you're about to hear, kind of introduces it in a way. Um, then you get the evidence. And then really important is it explains the evidence, says what it means. And then number five is probably the most important is sort of the analysis. You know, why is this evidence important? Why does it help prove the theory that I have, the thesis that I have? Uh, so it ties it back into the very the thesis that we started with. Uh, six is a conclusion sentence to summarize everything. And then seven is a transition sentence to the next body paragraph. So let's use, see a, a live example of that. And the link, actually, there's a whole write-up on it at the bottom, but you'll, you'll see all that later, too. Yeah, but it's at the very end, so, yeah. So here's a body paragraph about writing body paragraphs. It's kind of nice. You see that twist? <laughs> you know, as you look at it right now, it seems like it's a lot. So let's break it down into its components and see how it matches. So this is the exact same thing. So the first thing is the topic sentence. So crafting body paragraphs is widely considered to be the most challenging aspect of writing an essay. So as a reader, I know that this paragraph is going to probably, hopefully, it's going to be about you know, crafting body paragraphs. And then number two is kind of my introduction for the quote. The quote's coming. The evidence is coming. So number two sets that up. You know, a straightforward process designed by Dr. Cooks makes this process easier. So now, as a reader, OK, I'm ready. He's Dr. Cooks. So tell me more. So Dr. Cooks writes, having a sentence-by-sentence -sentence structure guides the student through the process of constructing clear, informative body paragraphs. So that makes sense. Now what does that mean? So a structure to guide the student increases the ability of the student to efficiently complete the body paragraphs and the essay. And number five, a roadmap to paragraph and essay writing relieves much of the anxiety some students have about writing and allows them to overcome writer's block when starting their essay. So we don't know what the thesis statement was, but four and five are kind of explaining what that, uh, what that quote means and why it's important. 
summarizing it at number six, you know, writing the body paragraph following a detailed process makes essay writing much more efficient and productive. And then number seven is a transition to the next paragraph. Additionally, using a process for your conclusion can be helpful as well. So it kind of takes me from this paragraph about body paragraphs to what's coming next is probably a paragraph about writing conclusions. So it's kind of a sm smooth that, that process. My next paragraph is probably going to say something about, you know, writing a conclusion is the most important part of writing, you know, whatever it says. Um, but it kind of sets that up. So I love this process because then it's like, oh, so I just have to go out and get the evidence. And then I've got this kind of set of prompts for each pair, each sentence of the paragraph. And I can just kind of go through almost mechanically and put it together and it'll all come through. Any questions about, uh, about that? So I've got my evidence. I've got my body paragraphs kind of laid out. Um, now I've got to write an introduction and a conclusion. So there's lots of different ways to write an introduction. Um, you probably heard, oh, you need to start with a hook to hook the reader, reader in. It's like, eh, it's nice if you can do that. Um, say something interesting related to the topic description of a situation, quotes or statistics that kind of capture the imagination, those can be good too. Um, it was kind of interesting in Dr. Cook's class, he didn't say that he didn't care what you put in your introduction, because that's kind of extreme, but it was almost like, you know, say, say almost whatever you want in the intro, what I care about is your thesis, because that's what I'm looking for. I'm going through, like, ah, blah, 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 blah thesis. That's what I'm looking for. And so I always say end w with a thesis statement, you know, what you will prove with the evidence that you, uh, that you have gathered, in your opinion based on the evidence. And some students say, oh, does this thesis have to come at the end? Or can it come in the middle? Can it be at the beginning? Um, and it can be in any of those places. Um, but I'm going to say to put it at the end. And I'm going to say that because you're going to be handing this paper in to a harried English professor. She's going to be flooded with these papers. And she's going to be flipping through, flipping through. And when she comes to that intro, the first place she's going to look for your thesis statement is going to be at the end of the first paragraph. Is that correct? That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> if she has to go find that thesis statement somewhere in there, it's more work. She may not find it. You may have to go back to her and say, why did you give me a B and say no thesis when it's right in the, right in the middle, <laughs> buried in the middle of the first paragraph. Then she'll say, oh, yeah, there it is. I missed it. <laughs> so I say we're after kind of easy, efficient, we're trying to get a very solid essay that's going to earn a strong grade. So we want to make life easy for the grader. So I'm putting my thesis statement right at the end of the first paragraph, because that's where they look for it. And the other thing I'm doing with my thesis, uh, I forgot to mention it before, is I'm reading that assignment really carefully. And I'm looking for key words that they have in that assignment. And if I can, I'm going to pop that into that thesis statement. Like if the assignment says, oh, compare and contrast, I might say, oh, my thesis is going to say, a careful comparison and contrasting of the evidence shows. <laughs> and then that may signal to the instructor, oh, yeah, this is going to be compare and contrast. OK, got it. <laughs> they got the assignment. And so I'm looking for things in that assignment that I can weave into the paper that are going to be clues to the most important reader of the paper, who's going to be the instructor who's, <laughs> who's going to be grading it. And so, um, so that's just another, uh, another factor. So I don't know if there's anything you want to add. I picked up that tip from <laughs> our resident English professor. It's exceptional. I think it's really great. Oh, OK. Yeah. <laughs> so 
let's see. So we do the intro. And we come to the conclusion. So just like a uh, district attorney, a uh, prosecutor is going to have a conclusion, closing arguments. He's going to summarize briefly the thesis. You know, maybe not the exact same words, but try to restate it. And I always say readers are intelligent, but they're, um, they're very forgetful. I think that's the word I want to say. You know. <laughs> they, you know, they start reading your paper, and almost as soon as they start reading, they're losing interest, and they get to your thesis, and it kind of perks up. And you've dropped these subtopics in in your thesis. So when they see it as they're reading the body paragraphs, oh, yeah, that's right. You know, we were talking about it before. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, the murder weapon. Yep, that's right. Oh, the car. Oh, yeah, that's right. I was just about to check my phone, but he's, now she's <laughs> talking about the, <laughs> the murder weapon. I remember that. And then by the time they finish the intro and all your body paragraphs, they pretty much forgot everything you were trying to say. <laughs> and so the conclusion is there to kind of remind them of the most important things. When they see it in your conclusion, they're going to remember because they just read it. But you want to summarize briefly that thesis, what we're trying to prove. We want to um, give back some of the important evidence from the body paragraphs, the most important things. When the, the prosecutor is giving his closing arguments to the jury, he can't go back through every piece of evidence that he just presented. The judge will be like, we got to wrap this up. We, we know all that. It's all in evidence. So he's going to pick out the most important things that really hammer home his case. Um, and then finally, um, you might want to add some parting thoughts, some new ideas that maybe you didn't have a chance to prove uh, with the evidence, but something to get the reader thinking. And there's just some ideas, you know. Of my favorite is always a call to action. It's like, what do you want? You wrote all this stuff. You proved your case. What do you want the reader to go out and do? Um, you know, sometimes a final quote or a thought-provoking question can be effective. Uh, I say nothing that takes away to distract from your main argument. Um, so just, uh, just a little something that kind of brings everything to a nice close. One other thing that uh, I didn't include in here, but sometimes it's a very effective to put a counter argument into either your conclusion or maybe even devote a whole body paragraph to it. And the counter argument kind of goes something like this, like you're proving all this stuff, everything's looking good, looking good, but you know that there's some naysayers out in the audience in the peanut gallery that are going to be like, oh, what about this? What about that? <laughs> and it kind of, you know, kind of, kind of demoralizes your whole process, like, oh, okay, there's the naysayer. <laughs> Everybody's got their two cents to throw in. So you almost want to jump ahead of them and say something like, oh, many people say that what I just said is not true. But, and then you counter that argument right there. And so then even as those naysayers are reading your paper, they're like, yeah, what about, what about? Oh, yeah, she covered that. <laughs> and so that's something else that can be, uh, can be effective as well, to have that, um, that kind of counter argument if you know that it's kind of out there. Let's see. So, you guys thought you were going to be here for an hour and a half. Huh? <laughs> so, you know, again, it kind of comes back. You know, you start by gathering evidence. You're gathering this evidence. Trust yourself that you're going to, a thesis is going to come. <laughs> And sometimes I used to wonder, it's like, why, why don't we just have a test? Why do we have to write this paper, you know, going way back? I just want to take a test. There's only one hour. There's an end point. And I realized as I kind of got more and more into this that professors assign these papers for a reason, for, for English papers so you can work on your writing, but it's also so, so that we can, can learn and think. It's teaching us to learn and think. We're learning new things. We're thinking about not just how to express them, but you know what our opinions are about them. 
and we're uncovering new information. We're finding out how to find information on our own. I know when <laughs> I was working, I worked as an investment strategist and we were like, oh, we need to come up with a new strategy so we can sell that and make money. <laughs> and it was like, there's no book that says, here's the new strategies that you can employ. <laughs> you have to go out and kind of research, you know, what kind of papers were written on currency strategies? And you're reading these papers like, oh, this one looks pretty good. Let's use that. <laughs> we don't have to think of the new ideas. Somebody else already <laughs> thought for us. <laughs> So it's this whole process of gathering evidence, um, formulating a theory, thinking about you know, how you want to organize it. That's why these papers get assigned. And so I have a much greater appreciation for <laughs> classes that have papers that are assigned to them. <laughs> Let's see. All the stuff you want. The only thing you should write down is that first thing that says this presentation it's bit.ly slash Lowell Paper Process. You go to that uh, website, and then this whole presentation will just pop up, and all these other links are, will be there. Um, there's a, small, a short paper, a two-page paper on body paragraph construction that I wrote. It's called uh, BITLY Cook's Body Paragraph, and it just outlines Dr. Cook's strategy for writing these body paragraphs in a, a more detail than what I just covered here. So, yes? Do you think that's in the first link? Um, that's a separate link. So the first link takes you to this whole presentation, which contains this page, yeah. which has all these other links. <laughs> the first one has the paper? The first one has. Is the what one has the other info? The second one? No, the first one has all this information that you just saw. Because you open that first one, it's going to open this presentation, and then you just go to the very end, and you'll get this page that has all of this stuff. Make an interesting cookie. I, I like it simple, efficient, <laughs> <I> engineer. <laughs> so is that, is, that, is that where you came up with this, or is this Cook's the, the, the detective theory or the detective? That's the program. Bennett detection. I'll get that straight. <laughs> It's the Cook's body paragraph. I'll give him credit for that. <laughs> is, that but is that where you came up? Is that where you got that, like looking at it like a detective? Well, when I saw that, that, it's like, oh, I need, this is great. This is kind of step-by-step -step process. I need to rethink, you know, the conclusion and the intro, you know, the intro. What are the steps I need to complete those? And really, what are my steps to do the whole paper? And so that's when I started thinking, I was kind of like, I, I don't have a thesis at first. It's like, well, a detective doesn't know who did it at first. Right. You got to get all the, you know, you got to go where the evidence leads you. And the evidence is going to lead you somewhere. And you have to trust that it will. And um, if it doesn't, then uh, you go talk to your professor. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Really <laughs> you know, because if you have the evidence that you could shape an opinion around, then you have the foundation for a body right. paragraph. Right. And you can start writing even if it's in the middle of your essay. Exactly. It's really hard to make yourself start with the introduction. That can be really scary and overwhelming. And sometimes you don't know all the things you're going to say. Right. So <laughs> you kind of got to get into making all your points and then kind of zoom out. Zoom out. I like that that concept. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Oh, thanks. All right. Right. Well, then you can come in, talk to me, <laughs> and we got Lucinda. Yeah. That's Professor uh, Falcone. She's okay. the English instructor. So, uh, yeah. Professor Johnson. Yeah. We, we did the ideas two weeks ago, and mm. then just to sign the essay, and our ideas are the body paragraphs. Right. Yes. Right.
right, 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 right. Well, that's the other, that reminds me of the other thing is uh, sometimes instructors, whether it's history, psychology, whatever, you'll be reading stuff all along. They'll assign the reading, and they won't actually give you the assignment until later. And so we've got to get ahead of them. We know the assignment's coming. <laughs> it's in the <laughs> syllabus. You're going to have to write a paper. <laughs> you know it's about what you're reading. <laughs> so don't wait for the actual, here's the assignment. Yeah. It's like, oh, i got to go back and read with that. Oh, it's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know it's coming. I'm making those notes. I'm documenting it because it's coming along. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I almost forgot about that. Yeah. Get ahead of the game. <laughs> and if. And if it's coming later, and you know it's coming, you can ask them for it. They may give it to you. Maybe they don't want you to see it yet. But if they give it to you, then you're that much further ahead. That's it. It's all about getting it? over. Can we give it up one more? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for coming. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> Great.